materialized views or read models are used to pre-compute expensive data so that you have it readily available for your API. If you are using events, you can leverage them to trigger the recalculation of your read models and in this video I'm going to show you how to do that. I have a CQRS implementation with Mediator and here I'm looking at the create order command handler. Now, apart from creating and persisting the order instance, this command handler also computes a new order summary instance, and this is actually our read model or materialized view, and it also persists it in the same transaction. If we take a look at the read model, you'll see that it is really, really simple. So what I'm actually going to do is make it slightly more complicated. So we're also going to introduce the customer name as a property. We already have the total price for the line items. And I want to introduce some additional information about the line items on the order. So let's actually create a nested record inside of our order summary, which is going to represent the line item. Now I'm going to have the ID of the line item. And because the line item references a product, we're going to have a product name and the product also has a SKU, which I'm going to persist inside of this line item record. And let's add some pricing information to our line item. So let's, for example, create a property called price amount. And I need one more property, which is going to represent the price currency. And now I'm going to use this line item to introduce another property to our materialized view or order summary class. So this is going to be a list of line items and let's call it line items. This read model is slightly more complicated because it's pulling information from a couple different tables. So we have the order information, which is just the order ID. We have the customer ID and name coming from the customers table. We have the total price, which is computed based on the line items. And we also have the line item information, which is the ID and price and also the product name and SKU. So in total, we're working with four different tables. Now let's see how we can calculate the value for the order summary. So if I go back to the create order command handler, you'll see that the compiler is complaining here because I'm missing the properties on the order summary. So I'm actually going to completely remove this part here and also remove the dependency on the order summary repository from the create order command handler. So what we are actually going to do is because the order create method is also raising an order created domain event, we are going to asynchronously calculate our order summary. I already have an event handler for the order created domain event, and it's currently just a dummy event handler that creates a new order created integration event. So let's actually get rid of all this and let's use it to create our order summary instance. So let's add a few dependencies that I know we're going to need inside of the order created domain event handler. So the first one is going to be the order summary repository. Let's go ahead and introduce that. And I'm also going to need the iUnit of work instance to be able to persist the order summary in the database. So let's add that and let's generate a constructor. So now we can go over to the handle method and we need to do three things. So we need to calculate the order summary based on the latest state in the database. So let's say we have some order summary instance that we are somehow going to calculate. I'm going to actually make this strongly typed so that it's obvious what I have. Then we're going to add it to the order summary repository so this is this step here. And lastly, we have to await the unit of work. So let's make this asynchronous. And we're going to say unit of work, save changes async, and we could pass a cancellation token. Now you have to be careful with this because if the cancellation token is actually triggered, then your order summary is not going to be persisted in the database. The most important part here is how we are actually going to calculate the order summary. Now, this is a complicated query touching a few tables. 
I don't necessarily want to pollute any of my domain repositories with this. So let's actually create some sort of helper service that I'm going to use to calculate my order summary. So let's call it I calculate order summary. So that should be descriptive enough. And what this is going to do is it's going to return a new order summary instance. And we can just give it a name of calculate async. Now, the only argument that this is going to need is the order ID, which is going to come from our domain event. If I take this interface and we go back to our order created domain event handler, let's actually inject it here as another service. So calculate order summary. Let's inject it from the constructor. I'm a little bit picky and I like to have my constructor arguments in the same order that I'm defining them in the class. So I'm actually going to move this to be at the first place. And now in my handle method, I can say await, calculate the order summary, and here's the order ID coming from the notification. So this barely fits on the screen. And let's actually move this to var. And this is all that I have in my order created domain event handler. Now it's relatively simple. I'm just calculating the order summary somehow and persisting it in the database. But the actual magic is going to happen in the implementation of this service. So I'm going to implement this in the persistence project. And let's, for example, add it in the services folder. So this is going to be the calculate order summary class, which is going to implement our interface. So let's make it internal at sealed and it's going to implement the I calculate order summary interface. So let's actually make this asynchronous and let's inject the application DB context so that we can work with EF core. So now all that's left to do is to write a complicated query that is going to calculate what we need for the order summary. So let's slowly start writing this query. When I have multiple joins, I like to use the query syntax over link. So let's try to do that. To use the query syntax, it's pretty similar to writing a SQL query. You start by specifying what you want to select. So I'm going to start by taking the order. So I'm going to say from order in context orders, and then let's start writing our joins. Let's first join on the customer table to fetch the customer information. And we need to specify what are the keys that we are using to join these two tables. So I'm going to join on the order customer ID and I'm going to say that this equals customer ID. So the next thing is going to be to join on the line items table. So I'm going to say in context line items and I'm going to rename this to be lowercase these two tables I'm going to join on the order ID should be equal to line item order ID. And the last one is going to be the product table in context products. And we're going to join on the line item product ID and it's going to be equal to product ID. Awesome, so these are our joins. Now I need to specify a where statement to filter this based on the order ID. And now we need to select something from the database. So I'm going to say select and we're going to create a new object. And what are we actually going to return for the order summary? Because I'm joining all these tables, I'm going to return a flat structure from the database. And then we're going to calculate the actual order summary in memory. So it makes sense to rename this to order summary data and we're going to use it to return the actual order summary instance. I'm going to return an anonymous object from the database because there's really no need to create a new type for this. So let's start by fetching the values one by one. So this is going to be the order ID and I'm going to return the GUID value. Then I need the customer ID, which is going to also be the GUID value. Then I need the customer name which is going to come from customer name. And now we need to return the line item and product information. So for line item, we're just going to fetch the line item ID. 
and we're also going to fetch the price amount and price currency so i'm going to say line item price amount and i'm also going to say price currency is equal to line item price currency and we're going to fetch the product name and SKU. so i'm going to say product name is product dot name and for the product SKU, we're going to say product SKU, and we're going to take the value it probably also makes sense to return the product id so let's also do that i'm going to fetch the product id value and i'm going to update the order summary on the line item to also have the product id quit so let's go back to the calculate order summary class if we take a look at the variable containing the order summary data you'll see that it's actually an iQuery variable which means this is still just a query that we didn't execute with NAD framework so we have to call one of the methods that are available to materialize this query to make this a bit more readable I'm actually going to materialize this in the next line so let's say order summaries which is going to be order summary data and we can actually await this and call to list async so we're going to asynchronously fetch all of this data from the database so now I can say something like this so order summary is going to be the order summaries list and we're going to group by the order summary order ID value because we only have one order there's only going to be one group so now I can say select and I'm working with a grouped order summary and I need to create a new order summary instance so I'm going to say new order summary and let's start populating these values so the key is actually going to contain the order ID and then we're going to take the customer information and the line item information one by one so if we take the first value from this group it's going to contain the customer ID and we're going to use the same approach to get the customer name now I need to calculate the total price so I can do something like this I can say group and sum the values that are in this group and I'm interested in the price amount property so this is going to be the total price and for the line items themselves we can project the individual values in this group and we can say select a new order summary line item instance and give it the id of the line item so this is going to be the line item id and then we're going to pass the product id the product name the product SKU. then we have the price amount and the price currency and lastly we just need to call to list here to satisfy the order summary constructor and now i just need to select my order summary and i can say first or single doesn't matter let's say first and we can return the order summary instance so our calculate method is a little bit complicated but what we have is a query fetching the data that we need from the database and once we have this data in memory we can go ahead and calculate the order summary we are still working with a SQL database and you might be wondering how I'm going to map the list of line items that I have in the order summary because this is a complicated object and SQL tables only store scalar values let's introduce an EF core configuration for the order summary entity so I'm going to say order summary configuration now this is going to be internal and sealed and it's going to implement I entity type configuration of order summary it only has one method allowing me to configure my table so I can say builder has key and let's say you have the order ID as the primary key and why I actually wanted to do this is I can say builder property and for the line items what I want EF to do is to map this to a JSON column now I'm actually using PostgreSQL as my database and Postgres has native support for JSON values so all I have to do is say has column type 
and I can say JSONB, which stands for JSON binary, which is more efficient than regular JSON. And PostgreSQL is going to take care of mapping a list of line items to JSON when I'm persisting to the database. And then it's also going to take care of deserializing the JSON string from the database into a list of line items. So if I go over my flow again, I have the create order command handler, which raises an order created domain event. I have a respective handler that is triggered asynchronously when an order created domain event is raised. And I have a service that I use to calculate my order summary instance, add it to the repository and persist it. And the calculation of the order summary involves loading all of the data from multiple tables in the database and then mapping that structure into an order summary instance. And lastly, I'm leveraging the fact that I'm using Postgres to persist a list of line items as a JSON column in the database. Let's send a GET request from Postman to the endpoint that is going to fetch our pre-computed order summary. So if I hit send, we get back a response which contains our customer information. And as you can see, there's also all of the line item details which are part of the order summary instance. Now, as far as the time that it takes to return this data, if I run it a few more times, you'll see that we get around 60, 70, 80 milliseconds. I know this really isn't a benchmark, but it's just a comparison. And here I have another endpoint that just fetches the same order summary directly, but it also computes all of the data in memory. So if I send this request, it's around a hundred and something milliseconds. So it's slightly slower. If you consider that data is read much more often than it is written, then using something like the materialized view pattern really makes sense. I hope that you enjoyed this video about asynchronously calculating a materialized view. I think that you'll enjoy this video next and until next time, stay awesome.